Hey guys, I promise there's more videos coming soon. My husband's computer just got fixed, so all of the introduction videos should be up really soon. Until then, you can deal with having my first ever Anthro in the News, my new weekly segment here. So I'm going to post all of the news articles that I was thinking about using for this week underneath so you guys can check it out. I'm just going to talk about two right now. The one would be the self-emulation in China, and the other one would be about the U.S. ambassador to Nigeria. So the article that's about the self-emulation in China isn't actually about the self-emulation itself. It's about the fact that there is a high-ranking Tibetan official in the Chinese government saying no self-emulation occurs while under his watch, which is fine and it's all political. Kind of don't really care about that. What's really interesting about the anthropology within the news article itself is the fact that, one, it really starts to help showcase to the Western world how diverse of a place China is and the kinds of religious practices and ethnic kind of struggles that are occurring in the country right now. I mean, China is just as big as the United States and if not more diverse than the United States. You also have a huge influx of the ethnic group called the Han Chinese, the main ethnic group known in China, coming into the Tibetan Plateau. And um, this huge migration is actually making native Tibetans feel threatened in the fact that their population isn't keeping up with it even though they're an autonomous region and that their practices are being pushed out in favor of Han ethnic practices. Um, and then also you have a state that is putting regulations on religious practices and there are actually some really really interesting things going on over there. One of the classes that I was so happy to partake in was on Tibetan religious practices mostly Buddhism, but a lot of Hinduism mixes in there, and a lot of the original native uh, religion that happened before Buddhism comes into it still comes into play. You have a lot of things going on in there. It is such a harsh environment, and the people of that area have really brought that into the religious ideas and having, you know, very large, scary monsters and deities that not only actually come to attack you, but actually protect you, protect you from other people, protect you from that harsh environment. Your protectors are just as scary as the things that are coming after you, and that's a reflection from these people's ideology into the environment that they're living in, one of the roughest areas in the world. So this article really, I think, can show to the showcase to the Western world uh, what it is like um, living in such a diverse and large country as China. The second article I want to talk about is actually more lighthearted than the self-emulations of setting yourself on fire in China, and that would be the U.S. ambassador to Nigeria. This article is on the fact that he actually did an interview, and it's not what he said in the interview, it's how he said it. He actually used Pidgin English. He's been taking the time to learn what is the lingua franca for Western Africa, and that really is more important to the people than what he said. No one really cares what he said in the article. I mean, they kind of do bring up what he said, but it's how he said it. If you want to truly connect with the people, you use their language. And he really understood this, and he even said that when he was interviewed about it later, of why are you doing this? He wants to communicate to the people. It is a very um, interesting hierarchy that Pigeon is in. It's not used for diplomatic purposes. It is just used for common purposes. Um, ways to, you know, buy something in the market from someone who's a different ethnicity than you, way to communicate from village to village to village across the entire area of West Africa. So he's learning this language that is used as a commonplace language, not one that is used among diplomats in high-ranking peoples to create laws and put in new financial policies or anything like that. He's actually taking the time to learn how to speak as the people of West Africa speak, and I think it's a really wonderful thing. He's hoping that this shows uh, U.S. diplomats how to go forward and actually connect with the people in their area, and I think he's doing a wonderful job. So until next week, I'll see you guys later. Thanks for checking out Can You Dig It?